Graduate School of Arts for 10 years, and then I had a litter of children. <laughs> well, it's better downhill from there, but I'm slowly starting. <laughs> anyway, um, yes, I think people sometimes ask me, when did you know? When did you know art? It's just always, I've got, I've got two passions in life, excluding for one. I've got two passions in life. My first memory of art, my first passion is art. And not just art, sculpture. I remember I was six years old and I was playing on a building site somewhere. And one of the builders came with a bucket full of cement with which he'd been plastering the wall. And he came to discard it on the heap that I was playing on. And I said to him, can I, can I have that? And he said, of course you can. And he took it out for me. And he put it down like this. And I sat there and I made my very first sculpture. I will never in my life forget. I looked at that little heap of cement and I thought, how precious. Now that kind of that kind of excitement still stays with me today. When I work with uh, clay, or when I work with whatever medium it is, but most of clay, and I know I can sculpt, that's it. That's that feeling. Anyway, so my second passion is storytelling. Now, what do you need to tell a good story? You get what we call a natural storyteller. That is someone that can keep you hanging on their lips and take you on journeys hours without you losing interest, having you sit on the edge of your, or of your seat. And then you have storytellers. <laughs> you know? What is the recipe for telling a story? First of all, you need three things. The first thing you need is a pot. You need a story. These things either come through your imagination, if you're a very creative person, or through life experiences, and you accumulate stories. The second thing you need is an audience. Okay, without an audience, the story just goes into the universe. The third thing you need are words. Now, words are abstract. If you weave a story, with words, you're weaving something abstract. And then what you do is you're creating something virtual and taking it over into something concrete in somebody's minds. Words are incredibly important. Now when you take these three factors and you put them together to create your story, The storyteller uses a psychic energy, or what we call a mojo, that he leaves in there. And that's what makes it magical. So what I do is, I've got an audience, thank you. <laughs> I've got a story, I'll, I'll run you through just two, two or three pieces and tell you their narrative or their story behind it. And the last thing is, I've got words. My words consist of a vocabulary of pictorial. I speak bronze. I speak clay. When I ask you, if I had to ask you to describe this lady for me, if I had to ask you to describe this for me in your home language, would you battle? I'm, I'm blindfolded. I can't see what you're talking about. Would you battle? No, you won't. Because you've got the vocabulary. If I had to ask you, describe this woman for me in French. <laughs> How would you fare? How would you fare? You won't be able to do it. I won't be able to, to understand what you're saying. And even if you have a rudimentary understanding of the language, it will be like listening to a toddler. So what happens when I have to describe this to you without words, but with clay? That is my language. I've got the vocabulary. 
that I've accumulated through the years to put down clay, to describe something, and that's my language. And when I teach, and people come in and they battle, I say, it's okay. You're still learning the language. We're busy with the amu, amas, amat, of clay. So don't do this fact. By the time that you're finished here, you're going to be able to express what you want to say through clay. Okay, that's just a little bit of an idea of where I come from with my 